show you a team of very good software developers. These guys are good, man. Look at these guys here. They are uh, uh, building the backend service, and those guys in the back, they are taking care of the inter web interface. And uh, this man is configuring his GoPro to create a promotional video. Really, really nice team. Not all teams are this good, though. So let me show you a team of slackers who just cannot get shit done. Here they are. So <laughs> the, <laughs> those guys there have been on Facebook for the entire day. And um, those guys in the back, they're watching fail videos. And this man here is preparing to upload the pictures of his cat to the internet. You, you probably can't see much of a difference between these two teams. Uh, neither can their manager or anybody else. This is the course of being a developer. Nobody really knows what you're doing. Because you look like you're just typing into a computer, right? Whether you're uh, just slacking off or building the next big thing. You look exactly the same. So I, at some point in my life, I had to accept that my closest people, my parents, closest friends, girlfriend, they just didn't know what I do for a living. They, I, I tried a few times, uh, look that this is source code, and then it was the same thing over and over again. Like, this is my son, he does uh, something with computers. And uh, at one point, you just give up on that, right? Because uh, all they understand is that you're doing something with software. So the common sentence that you hear is, oh, so you, you must be smart, right? Uh, they mean smart as in uh, uh, you must be a nerd. You must, uh, uh, you must have this logical intelligence so uh, you, you work with complicated stuff. This is, uh, this is the word, complicated. You solve complicated problems. Huh? Um, now, this is the point of my speech. I want to make a point that, no, this is not the job of a developer, solving complicated problems. At least not the job of a really good developer. Uh, middle of the scale developers spend all of their time solving complicated problems, but that's not what great developers do. And uh, because I'm still a nerd, indeed, I want to be precise, so I want a precise definition of what complicated means. And to do that, I will go into the theory of complexity and use this model that comes from a guy named uh, uh, Dave Snowden, not that Snowden. He's a Welsh professor. And uh, it, I found it very useful. So let's, uh, let's start with a simple, simple example. Um, Let's say you're driving your car, and uh, back from work, uh, no traffic, you know the road, and you see your reserve light blinking, for example. So what do you do in this case? Problem, reserve light blinking, what would you do? Maybe, maybe you're, you live just around the corner, and then you say, okay, I can't be bothered, I will do it tomorrow morning. The important point here is that you know what to do. You know what will happen in each and every case. This is the definition of simple in complexity theory. These are causes and those are effects. And the relationship between cause and effect is clear to everybody up front. If you know anything about the system, you will say, hey, if I do this, then that will happen. This is simple. You know what, you predict the future. You can predict the future. Unless, of course, you get to the uh, f fuel station and there is a strike. But yeah, strikes, as everybody knows, don't happen. So uh, you predict the future. Now, I want to hear from you. What do you do in your job that is simple? You just get down and do it. Getting coffee is a good example. It's probably going to work. If it doesn't, then you know what to do. Hmm? Yep. Sorry, what was that? Yeah. 
Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now I, I don't want to necessarily to go down this particular loop. <laughs> do you do you have any examples that relate to programming? Accounting. Oh, counting. You mean writing code to count? Okay. That's yeah. oh, damn simple. Yeah. What again? Saving your files, yeah, 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 well, it's stuff that is no-brainer, right? Yeah, it is simple. And uh, as a small mnemonic for simple, let's use a bicycle, because that's what Snowden recommends. The idea of a bicycle is that it's a simple system, because you learn how it behaves, and it keeps behaving like that. And you learn how to ride it, you keep riding it. You can kind of wrap your head around the system. And then it's simple. Um, here is one example of simple that I found on Stack Overflow. Why doesn't bundle update update the gem file to use Rails uh, whatever version? Okay, this guy simply was new to bundle, uh, bundler. Uh, he didn't know how to uh, use it actually. So he was locking the version right in the gem file instead of gem file lock. So when he said bundle update, it wasn't working. So once he knew, because somebody gave him an answer, now it's easy, right? That's how you solve a simple problem. You just learn how to do it and do it every time. You define a procedure. There is a simple procedure. It's, the procedure is usually simple enough that especially when you're working in computers, that you can automate it. Automate. That's a, a very good strategy. So for example, you might say, every time I run bundle update, I, okay, I will run bundle update every time Gemnasium tells me that this gem needs to be updated. And after a while you say, why should I check my mail from Gemnasium? Why shouldn't, shouldn't I automate it? And apparently I just learned that indeed, that's what the Gemnasium guys are going to provide um, next week or whatever. Automation like that, that will run your bundle update. And in general, you have this thing called best practices. If you've ever been in big companies, they are obsessed by best practices. It means simply, it works every time, do it every time, don't think, okay? Like, uh, you update your bundle, you run your tests. I, I think it works pretty much every time, just do it. This is not what you do. I mean, you do it a little bit, but if you only do this, then you're expandable. You can be replaced by a script. Uh, if you've been, again, in the enterprise, I'm pretty sure you did meet a few developers who only did simple things, but well, they were not really carrying their weight. At some point, they were obsolete. You could write a program and get rid of them. So simple is not interesting. Now I will give you another example. The other example, uh, now you're not driving a car, you, you, are, you buy a new car, but to spare some money, you buy this car at Ikea, so you get home with a huge box with all the pieces of the car in, and you sit down, and now you have to assemble your car. And this is probably not simple, you start picking up all this stuff out of the box, and how does it fit together, you can't just get down and do it, right? It's, it's a bit messy. So you need to learn. You need to learn how to do it. You need to somehow study how to assemble the car. And this is what is called, in the theory of complexity, complicated. You still have cause and effect. You know you will get your damn car. But you need to do it, so you need to study, and you need to say, hey, if I do this, I get, oh, no, oh, oh, no, wait a minute, it's going there, okay? You study, you analyze the problem, you develop skills. This is the place where you need skills. Once you're over, you improved your skills at assembling cars. Indeed, you could decide that I can't be bothered, I will just go to a person who knows how to assemble a car, and give money to this person, and bang, I get a car back. You hire the expert, right? You buy the skills. And the mnemonic for this, in this model, is a 747. 
because I personally don't know why a 747 flies. It's damn complicated, but give me enough time and enough books, and in 10 years or so, I can tell you exactly why it flies. Or I can ask somebody who knows, and she will tell me straight away. What do you do in your job that is complicated? That's a, an awesome example. Time zones, yup. Encoding, yeah, that encode, that's the stuff that makes me go fuck, but then I will get it. Eventually, I will get it, right? Sorry? Debugging, debugging is complicated. I know, I mean, I can still predict the future. I can still say I'm gonna find it, but I don't know how long it's gonna take it. Uh, take me until I get into it and I analyze the problem for real. I look at the code. Yeah, it's complicated. High availability is starting to cross the border. So keep it in mind. I'm not sure it's complicated. I, I'm not sure that you can sit down and analyze the system and come up with a plan for a system that has high availability. Up to a point, maybe. But keep this in mind, it's an interesting example. Uh, I found this on the internet, this guy saying, hey, I have two models and uh, I, in, in, a, in Rails and I need to do this query. How do I do that? And somebody is answering with an analysis of the problem. In SQL, you would write these, so you can write this in Different ways in active record, and the, here is one way to do it. So it's not necessarily the, the way or even the best way, but that's how you solve a complicated problem, right? What do you do to solve a complicated problem? You ask on stock, or that is point two. Keep it in mind for a moment. Either you analyze it yourself or you go to the expert and stack overflow qualifies, right? You Google it. Somebody else out there has the answer. Just give it to me, man. I don't want to study SQL. So this is complicated. It requires brain power. It's the stuff that your parents think that you're doing all the time. Uh, another thing about complicated things, uh, problems is that you don't have best practices that work every time, but you have good practices that generally work and you apply those. So you, you need a lot of brain power. That's the you must be really smart thing. And arguably this is not what you do most of your time if you are a really great developer. So I'm going into step three now. now you don't have to drive a car. You don't have to assemble a car. I want you to design a car. I give you resources. I give you a deadline. You take over the European market for small family cars. Is this problem simple? Well, of course not. Is this problem complicated? Can you predict the future if you study it hard enough? Can you sit down? and think real, real hard, and then keep thinking under the shower so you don't overheat, and then come up with a beautiful plan that has 100% chances of taking over that market. You can't. This is not complicated. This is what the theory of complexity calls complex. Complex specifically means there is a relationship between cause and effect, but you don't know it. Maybe you will know it after the fact. After you fail at taking over the European market, you can look back and say, we didn't think about that competitor. But before the fact, you can't know it, no matter how much you analyze the problem. There is a big cloud hanging over it. And, uh, what, what's the, the complicated system, by the, the most complicated system you can imagine and you have to do with every day? 
What? Mm, yeah, sorry, the, I, I was meaning the most complex. So yeah, Rails is damn complicated. Estimate? Estim estimates. Estimates is a very good example of a complex problem. If you sit down and you think real hard, your estimate will still be off. You will know exactly 100% uh, the right estimate after you've done the job. Yep. Another one? Oh, that is actually what I was hunting for. People. People are complex by definition. If you ever went through a stage, usually when you're a teenager, where you think, hey, I can study people and I can understand them, I can predict what they will do. Some people never outgrow that stage and they get into the game, they become, you know, players and stuff like that. But uh, actually, you, you can manipulate people, but you cannot really predict them. Living systems are complex. So uh, here is your mnemonic frog. It's a living system. The whole is bigger than the sum of the parts. You can take a frog apart and then good luck putting it together. It's not going to work, I can tell you. I didn't try. So I, you gave me a few wonderful examples of uh, complex in your job. I, I just went hunting for more and something maybe a bit technical. You said rails. And indeed, there is something complex about Rails. Look at this question. How do I make my Rails project a hexagonal Rails project? And why, implicitly? Should I do that? What do I get out of that? And then you can start fighting, and DHH would say, no, never. And uh, some other guy would say, yes, this is the right way to do things. And uh, you argue over the details. But ultimately, there is no one answer to this question. It's a complex problem. The answer is, it depends. Maybe what works for uh, DHH does not work for me, which is also a good key to, to see the entire uh, silly fight over TDD. Yeah. Uh, another one. Oh, sorry. Uh, about, so, uh, I'm going back to the hexagonal rails. This is architecture. That's why I told you earlier on, I'm not sure about high availability. Can you really be sure your system is highly available before you build the system? Perfect. After that, you find out. That's complex. That, that's the definition of complex. After you do it, you find out. Actually, many companies, one thing that drives me crazy in working with enterprise companies is that they often tend to treat complex problems, architecture, as if they were complicated. So they say, hey, we will appoint an architect and sit this person in a room with a lot of food, and this person will think real hard, and finally, he will come up with a perfect architecture, right? And that's bullshit, right? Uh, and I, I mean, you have this person thinking all day about stuff he never did. And then he writes the document, and he passes this document on to a bunch of people who are doing all day stuff they never thought about. What could possibly go wrong, right? That's, yeah, that's bullshit. And it comes out of confusing complicated and complex to completely different things. Another example. Um, this person is asking for a tool that does uh, to-do lists. Now, we just saw an example that uh, a to-do list system can be much more complicated, uh, at least technologically, than uh, you are assuming. That was what Chad Fowler is building. Right? Uh, but in general, to-do lists, if you ever tried to select one, and you probably did, you know that they are uncanny, because how, how hard can it be? And then there are so many, and uh, it's very hard to find one that really works for you. So selecting a tool is another problem that is complex, actually. And again, some companies treat it as complicated. It's a matter of comparing features. They build feature matrices. 
And then they put a few people there analyzing the feature matrices, and then they say, this is the perfect tool. And then nobody uses the stupid tool because it's just not the right tool. What about trying the tool in the first place before buying? But no, they don't do that, I'll show you. And uh, I could go on and on. When do I stop refactoring? This guy says, I'm obs obsessive compulsive about refactoring. So I have Hello World and I start extracting classes out of it. When should I stop? Well, dude, I can tell you this is too much, but how much exactly is too much? Well, it depends. Show me your code. That's a complex problem. And uh, discuss it. How can I tell my colleague that his estimates suck? Wow, people stuff, complex. Huh? So this is what you do. If you are a great developer, this is what you do. You solve complex problems. Which means, specifically, that all the stuff that you do for simple problems to solve complicated problems, they don't work anymore. For example, you don't define a procedure. How could you define a procedure? You don't even know what to do. You don't even know exactly what the problem is. You will know after the fact what the problem was. You can't automate. You need human intelligence there. You can't analyze, or better yet, you can analyze. Maybe it will help a little, but ultimately it won't get you to the final solution, to a good solution. You can't ask the experts, because the experts know actually less than you do about your environment. Again, PDD. You don't have good practices, best practices. You, you can just try and find what works for you. And this is how you find it. This is how you solve complex problems. You take a small step forward. You see what happens. You learn. You do it again. This is the process of solving complex problems. This is what you guys and girls do. And uh, because the shift is on the learning, this means that when you get into the problem, you approach the problem for the first time, of course, you know a lot of stuff. But that stuff is not quite as important as the stuff that you learn here. That's, that's the law of complexity. To, uh, when I'm dealing with a complex system, I can't see what's behind the cloud. I can only say, look, I will push that button and see what happens on the other side, in a way. You learn like that. And if you do it again, in a slightly different system, you might have a different result. So I would wrap up by saying that lear learning, your ability to learn new things, is more important than your ability to know new things. So I pity the developers that brag about their knowledge. Your knowledge will be obsolete in no time at all. Your knowledge counts exactly zero. Gives you bragging right with people who are doing simple things, because they will go like, oh, knowledge, oh, brains. But people who know better know that that doesn't count. What really counts is, can you learn new stuff now? Today. And this also means that I admire smart people. Don't get me wrong. I don't consider myself very smart. So when I see some guy or get girl uh, who's really smart and can solve these complicated problems, I admire this person, but overall, I don't think that's the most important thing in this job. Flexibility is open-mindedness trumps having a big brain any day. And uh, last, but important, um, if you're a developer, you communicate all the time. You're used to communicate to machines for sure. But every line of code, it, let's go to the most technical thing you do, code. Every line of code will be read by humans many, many times. So actually, you have two targets that you want to communicate to, humans and machines. And I would say that you've, if you're great at communicating with machines, but you suck at communicating with the humans, then you're half a developer. Not even that. This is uh, crucial. Let's recap. 
there are three models of problems. Simple means that you know cause and effect upfront and it's obvious. Complicated means that you can know them if you study enough or you ask somebody who did. Complex means you can't know until after the fact. And if you are a developer, you are probably more into complex. If you are a lame developer, you are into simple. If you are a good developer, you might be do a lot of complicated stuff. But if you are great, you are into complex. And if you are into complex, learning, having an open mind, and being able to communicate to people is more important than what you know today, how smart you are, and being able to communicate to a machine. I'm not saying that the things on the right are not important, but I'm saying that the things on the left, they are what really helps you tell a great developer from a merely good developer. If you can do that, you are the woman or man. Paolo Perotta, Nusco is uh, my Twitter handle. Uh, I talked about frogs today. Thank you for listening. This book is so fresh. It went to production two days ago. If you like the first edition, you will like this edition more. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>